Hey, what's up guys? I'm Alan and this is Derek and there's been a lot of bro science going on around dopamine detox So we're gonna debunk what it actually is and if it can help you So it was popularized by the psychologist dr. Cameron Seppa and it actually grew from established practices in addiction therapy from the common method of cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT so it looks like these bro scientists from the internet might actually be onto something. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter that's implicated in the dopaminergic mesolimbic reward pathway that essentially connects the ventral tegmental area of the forebrain to the ventral striatum of the basal ganglia on the midbrain, insofar regulating incentive salience and facilitating reinforcement of reward. Just kidding, Derek's nerd ass biomedical science degree aside, this video will be broken down into these categories, explaining dopamine detox from a scientific but not too dull perspective. If you have a hard time watching this entire video, it might expose that you too are just some strung out dopamine junkie, when what we all really want is to be like Derek, who is so dopamine deprived that he thinks all this dumb ass nerd shit is actually interesting. Consisting of GABAergic and glutenergic neurons that receive stimuli from both cholinergic neurons within the pedunculopontine pontine nucleus and the lateral dorsal tegmental striate. But all jokes aside, dopamine detox really has helped us in our business that we run outside of YouTube. And while we are by no means experts on this subject, we have been experimenting and researching it over the last couple of months. So we just wanted to share what we've learned. All right guys, so if you've never heard of dopamine detox, the best way that I like to explain it is what I call the 50-20 analogy. And this would be if you were looking at social media, that could be releasing 50 points of dopamine, while something like working on your business only releases 20 points of dopamine. If we want to do something challenging, like work on our business, and we're always looking at social media, which is releasing 50 points compared to 20 points, we can't ever expect ourselves to have the motivation if we can do something way easier and get way more dopamine. So the basic idea around dopamine detox is to take out things in our lives that are giving us too much dopamine too easily so that getting smaller amounts of dopamine is rewarding once again. And the tricky thing with this analogy when you get 50 points from things like social media or pornography is that our brain has no context on what dopamine releases are good and which ones are actually bad. So if your brain locks onto something that's giving it a lot of dopamine, it won't care if it's ruining your life. And obviously we can see that like in drug users and we can all look at them and be like, oh, that's crazy. But what really helped me was being like, how am I doing this in my own way? What am I doing that is like a drug user who's just trying to get their next fix? And how can I be more cautious on what I allow myself to get dopamine from? Because my brain doesn't care whether or not it's good or bad. It doesn't see context. It only sees yes or no, this gives me dopamine or it doesn't. So the purpose of doing a dopamine detox is so that you can choose things that you actually want to get in your life and focus on them with way more motivation. So what Alan is talking about within science is referred to as sensitization or habituation. They're actually different things. And sensitization is basically when you're building a tolerance to something. Like when an alcoholic needs to take five shots of vodka in order to get the same effect as someone who doesn't drink can get from one shot of vodka. Or we live in Colorado here and I have a friend that literally needs to take 12 dabs of the highest potency THC on the market in order to even feel high. Whereas, you know, me where I don't smoke weed, if I take one hit off a joint, I'm going to be pretty high. So that's, that's sensitization. Basically how it works with dopamine is when dopamine's flooded into your brain, your brain responds by reducing the amount of receptors and reducing the amount of dopamine that's produced in response to that stimulation. So that leads in habituation, where basically in order to get the same effect, the same feel, the same amount of dopamine, you need to up the ante, you need to up the level of stimulation. And basically in CBT, in Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, it says that if you don't break the cycle of habituation, it'll just keep escalating indefinitely, pretty much to the point where you know, you're know you like those rats in that study where they just keep hitting the cocaine lever until they die, right? So it probably won't be that extreme if you're just addicted to social media, but it will continue to get worse. So this is something to take very seriously. And it surprises a lot of people when you tell them that alcoholics actually don't get a hit of dopamine once they take the shot of alcohol. It's everything leading up to that shot of alcohol that's producing dopamine for them. It's the anticipation that motivates them, that makes them feel the drive to go out there and get that shot of alcohol. So this accounts for the 
classic dilemma of drug users chasing the dragon, right? They can just never feel like they can get enough. And you can probably relate to this too when scrolling social media or watching a bunch of YouTube videos. It just keeps going. It's the anticipation. Well, maybe the next video, there's gonna be something that's gonna be even cooler I'm gonna learn. Or maybe this next post is gonna change my life, right? It's the anticipation. And this also relates to you know a lot of spiritual talkers, a lot of woo-woo hippies will say that the journey is the destination. And in a sense, when you think about it, but what they're really saying from a lens of science is that dopamine is not released when you actually achieve the goal. It's released in anticipation of the goal, right? It's released during the journey. And so you're gonna feel most happy when you're moving towards the goal. You're gonna feel the most dopamine when you're on a linear path to that goal. And you don't actually get the dopamine once you hit the goal and once you achieve whatever you're getting. So to be able to follow the process instead of just trying to achieve a goal, you have to have natural rewards be rewarding again. And that's the purpose of dopamine detox. Simple things like working on your business or spending time with family and friends will only be rewarding if you eliminate things that are high dopamine like 50 points. Those 20 points will never be rewarding if all day and every day we're partaking in activities that are releasing 50 points of dopamine. The most interesting example I've found of this in the scientific community is by Nobel laureate winner Nicholas Timbergen and he designed a series of experiments that showed what he calls supernormal stimulus. And the basic idea behind this is that if you take a group of birds and you have them sitting on their eggs and then you take a way larger egg and you paint it a bright color, they're more likely to sit on that than their actual offspring because it's a super normal stimulus. Some other examples of this would be these little beetles mating with beer bottles because the color of the beer bottle reminds them of the female beetle, but it's even more colorful than the female beetle. So that super normal stimulus arouses them more than a female beetle beetle. Another example of this would be these monkeys paying to see female monkey bottoms and foregoing the opportunity to drink some juice. And the last example I'll give you is in humans where you'll see male humans looking at tiny square pixels of a female that tricks their brain into thinking that that's real and that arouses them too. And all of these are examples of super normal stimulus. And the problem with super normal stimuli is that it releases way more dopamine than you would ever find in a natural environment and the problem with that is that reality cannot compete with super normal stimulus. So if you're doing something like sitting around with your family and friends compared to looking at social media, social media will give you way more dopamine and activate the social part of your brain in a way that is a super normal stimulus and just sitting around with family and friends can never compete with that so we'll spend way more of our time doing things like sitting on social media instead of actually being with family and friends. So dopamine detox would be an example of quitting social media to try to let normal stimulus be as stimulating and rewarding for me as it was in our ancestral environment. And you can see how in the future this is only going to compound. Like when the movie WALL-E came out or with virtual reality, people are really scared that this reality will just get so boring that we'll never even live in it at all. And all of these illustrate the idea that super normal stimulus completely take away from reality's ability to compete with those things. So this is it. This is the modern day struggle, resisting these super normal stimuli. Our ancestors did not have to face this. I mean, they had dopamine in response to cues as well, but it wouldn't be comparable to the same amount of dopamine that's released from an Instagram heart, which convinces you that the most important thing you can be doing with your life for the next six hours is scrolling and looking at a bunch of pixels on a six by three inch rectangle, right? That's craziness. And the constant novelty that's everywhere in the internet on mobile applications creates an anticipation that's almost irresistible. So it's pretty crazy. We're the first generation ever out of all humans to be experiencing this overstimulating environment and all of these super normal stimuli. It's, um, it's pretty crazy when you think about it because this challenge is completely new and we're the ones facing it and we're the ones confronting it for the first time. And that's really why me and Alan are out here in the first place is we're experimenting with things like a dopamine detox because it helps us overcome 
overcome this challenge and it helps us overcome the modern day struggle so that we can be more ambitious, we can be more productive, and we can really get what we want out of life and enjoy the journey while we're doing it. And that's what it's really all about. This dopamine detox is meant to help you get the most out of life and to change your life into something that you really want. Insofar regulating insular <laughs> me. <laughs> Incentive salience. Hey guys, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Derek's. What the fuck is that word? Insular <laughs> salience? <laughs> insular salience? Yeah. Insular? No, no, incentive. Oh, incentive. Whatever you try to remember incentive. the word salience. Incentive. Dude, you're like, you're like, soliloquy. Solilo <laughs> Solon. Incentive salience. Incent yeah. Insofar.